My name is Kay Byfield, and this is your Art Speak Studio moment from Art Speak Studio in Dallas, Texas. And today I want to talk about what does it take to be an artist. In my art classes, I often find that the students are discussing the question of whether or not they are an artist because when they tell people that they paint, other people say, oh, you're so lucky to be an artist. And a lot of my students are really uncomfortable with that term. So it reminds me of a unit I used to teach in art appreciation when I taught college classes. And I would tell the students about a painting elephant named Ruby. Now Ruby, had been captured in the wild. She was an Asian elephant and she resided in the Phoenix Zoo. When she was an adolescent, she became quite troublesome. She was, she was bored and she was acting out and she could be very unruly and a bit scary. And so in order to entertain her, to keep her busy, to try to come up with ways to stop her from behaving badly, the keepers came up with the idea of letting Ruby paint. Now, painting elephants have been around since the 1930s, so this was not a novel idea, and Ruby took to it like crazy. Ruby loved to paint. She, she got very excited when the paints would come out, she would even push other elephants away when they were getting a chance to paint because she wanted to do it instead. So Ruby was a very avid painter. My question is, was Ruby an artist? The initial response that I always got from students was, yes, of course she's an artist. She's making paintings. That's all it takes to be an artist. And I would say, okay, if our, Ruby's an artist, what other questions might we need to have in order to make that determination? And one of the questions students would ask me is, did Ruby choose her own colors? And I can tell you that she seemed to choose her own colors. The keepers would put the brush in her trunk and she would point to the color she wanted to use and they would dip the brush in that color and she would use that color until she was done with it and then she would select a different color. So it did seem like she was choosing her own color. Another question that the students would ask is, was Ruby responding to her environment? Was she painting anything that was around her? And Ruby's paintings were non-objective abstractions, meaning pure abstract paintings. They weren't representational. However, there was one time when the, the people who were visiting the zoo would stand around the elephant compound and watch while Ruby painted, and a man had a heart attack, and they had to bring in an ambulance. And that day's painting that Ruby did seemed to have concentric red swipes that could be interpreted as a translation or a or symbolic treatment symbolizing the flashing red light on an ambulance. So it's possible she was responding to her, her environment. Another question I always got was, what do her paintings look like? As I told you, she uh, painted non-objective abstractions, and here are a couple of Ruby's paintings. So the fact that Ruby paints non-objective paintings is really not a, a problem because human beings also paint non-objective paintings and have been since the early 20th century. The difference is that the people who paint non-objective paintings probably know how to paint with subject matter as well, and Ruby doesn't. So that may be an important factor but it doesn't necessarily mean that Ruby's work isn't art. So it looks like Ruby's an artist, right? She seems to have some things she's trying to say. She's using art materials 
She is painting non-objective art, which is totally in keeping with what other artists are doing. Not so fast. Let's look at the criteria that one uses to decide who's an artist. When we look at the earliest human artworks we know of, the Neolithic cave paintings done 40,000 years ago, there are important differences between what those people did and what Ruby did. We don't know why they made those paintings, but we do know that they had to bring in the materials they used, and they had closely observed and skillfully executed the subject matter. That means that they intended to make art, and they made critical choices as they made it. Ruby doesn't do any of that. The materials are supplied to her, and she doesn't modify them in any way. And she isn't going out and doing any kind of research or planning. She doesn't even mix her own colors. Perhaps she reacts to her environment a bit, but that's also really minimal. Does she really express anything unique with her art? Compare what she's doing to what artists do when they have an idea for a painting and then execute it. Ruby's paintings do sell. A collector of art who owns a Helen Frankenthaler and a Robert Motherwell abstract painting paid for a ruby. However, the attraction for these paintings is about who painted them, not what they say or how well they're done. In the art market, artworks are valued according to the significance of the work in the context of art history and the record of sales of earlier works by the same artist and similar artists. Ruby's paintings aren't rare. Don't, they don't show any particular expertise and they will never hang in a reputable gallery. My conclusion is that Ruby's swipes across the surface of a canvas are not art. She isn't planning them. She isn't providing any of her own materials. She isn't trying to say anything that brings anything new into the world as an artist does. Those kinds of things are necessary to be an artist. Whether a painting is representational or not is not a key signifier of whether or not it's art, but it is a key beginning because only human beings can create representational art. So other creatures can never be an artist unless we find some kind of uh, savant that can actually create representational work. Now, I know that there are videos on the internet of elephants painting representational images of other elephants and so forth, but those have all been proven to be hoaxes that are per perpetrated by the trainers on an audience and the film crew. Um, there is no proof that any animal other than a human being can make a representational work of art. I hope this little presentation of who is an artist has been helpful to you and that, it, that you'll be able to give it some thought. And I hope that you're enjoying making thoughtful, interesting artwork for yourself. Until next time, happy painting.